نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغذوب عليهم ولا الضادين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم على سيدنا مولانا محمد المبارك صلى الله عليه وسلم وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله أم Last week I said that we would start talking about uh, Imam Hussein al-Islam in Karbala. Uh, however, today is the 27th of Dhul Hajj. And so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is around the time that Umar Radiyan was martyred. And so I want to actually uh, talk more about the connection between Umar Radiyan and the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, First, though, uh, before I get into that, I had alluded to the Hadith of Jibreel uh, uh, about a week ago or so, uh, and which deals with well, actually the narrator, which is Umar radiallahu So if you know, and so I want to go over that before we, we continue on. But if you look at the Hadith, you know, Umar radiallahu he says that he was sitting, or the companions were sitting with the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the masjid. And they see this man who comes in, you know, his clothes are extremely white, hair is black, you know, no signs of any travel on him, and yet no one knows him. And he comes and he sits in front of Rasulullah so some with his knees touching the knees of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he addresses Rasulullah so some by saying, Ya Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala addresses various prophets by their names. You know, Ya Yahya, Ya Isa, Ya Musa. But there is nowhere in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says Ya Muhammad. Everywhere in the Quran, when He addresses Rasulullah so some He addresses him by his characteristics. Ya Ayyuhan Nabi. Ya Muzammil. Ya Muddaffir, whatever condition he is in, Allah SWT addresses him accordingly. You know, this is the love between Allah and his Habib. You know, and the adab that Allah SWT is teaching the Ummah of Rasulullah. However, if you look at the, at the word Muhammad, you know, Muhammad is a name. But Muhammad also is a characteristic. It has a meaning. And the meaning of Muhammad is the one who is praised excessively, or very highly praised. They all come from the root of Hamd. Hamid, Mahmud, Ahmad, Muhammad. Same root. Of course, in the Quran and in every Salat, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All the Hamd is for Allah who is the Lord of the worlds. So every derivative of Hamd is technically the name of Allah. But again, this is the love of Allah to his, to his Habib that he gives him his own name, the one who is excessively praised. And so here when Jibreel al-Islam is addressing Rasulullah so some, he's not addressing him by his name, but by the characteristic of, oh, the one who is praised excessively. And then he asks him, he says, what is Islam? And Rasulullah so some, he says what? He says Islam is to bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. Muhammad, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his messenger. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. To establish salat, 
to pay zakat, to fast in Ramadan, and to make hajj if you are able. And Jibri, or this man, again, who no one recognizes, he says, you have spoken the truth. And so Omar Radim, when he says they heard this, you know, they were even more astonished, you know, who is this, ma this man? First he asked the question, and then he testifies to the answer to the question as though he already knows the answer. Then he asked him, he says, what is Iman, faith? And here Rasulullah he says to believe in Allah, his books, his, his, uh, uh, the angels, the messengers, the last day, and that good and bad are decreed by Allah, predestination. And again, Jibreel al-Islam says, you have spoken the truth. And then he asks, again, he says, what is Ihsan? And so Rasulullah he says, to worship Allah as though you see him. And if you cannot do this, then know that he sees you. Here, Jibreel, or this man, he doesn't say you have spoken the truth, he continues on. Now he asks, he says, when is the hour? And so Rasulullah he, he responds by saying that the, that the questioner knows as well as the one being questioned. Doesn't say, I don't know. Just like when the companion, he comes and he asks Rasulullah when is the hour? Again, Rasulullah doesn't say, I don't know. He asks him the other question. He says, what have you prepared for it? So same thing here, which literally means that you know as well as I know. And the other aspect of that is that you know as well as I know that I can't tell them. So then he says, then give me, then tell me of its signs. You know, because if you look at it from another perspective, if someone knows all the signs to the hereafter, or all of the signs to the hour, and he knows that this sign will happen after this sign, and this sign after this sign, and this sign will happen, this will be the last sign before the hour. So after this, the hour will come. If he knows when this is, he already knows when the hour is. So he says, tell me of its signs. So the first sign, he gives two signs here. The first sign is that the slave girl will give birth to her master. And we'll come back to this one. The second sign is that the naked, barefooted, naked uh, Bedouins, you know, who uh, herders of sheep and goats, will compete in building lofty buildings. If you look at what's happening in the Middle East today, what is happening? Tallest building in the world. One country makes it, or one person makes it, now somebody else got to make it. And who are the people that are making it? If you look at their history, these are the people who before the British came were nobodies. They were bandits. Their occupation was to raid the caravans that were coming for Hajj. They're still doing it, now they're doing it in a white collar manner. You know, before they did it, you know, actually killing and looting, and now they plunder and loot the other way. You know, if you look at the Saudi family in Saudi Arabia, or the Sabah family in Kuwait, and all the other rulers in the Middle East, who propped them up other than the British? British set them up. Again, these people who had nothing to do with Islam. Were the enemies of those trying to practice Islam. And now these are the same people building, you know, Burj Al Khalifa and all the other buildings. But the first one, where he says that the slave girl will give birth to her master. If you look at the trend these days, in another narration he says that the, that the children will be full of rage. You 
look at children these days, they're, uh, they're angry. Why? Who knows? They're angry. You go to look in the schools, you know, the teacher can't even discipline them. You look in the household, and the trend is what? The parents are scared of their children. And especially as the children get a little older, and the parents get a little weaker, parents do something children don't like, uh, put them in a nursing home. And especially if you look at the more affluent or those who have more wealth, those households where, the, where their children are brought up as, as brats, you know, spoiled brats. You go somewhere, children running havoc, parents just sitting, can't say a word. And this is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi already told us. And this is, you know, this isn't everybody, but this is the trend now. This is the direction that everything is going in. And everything that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi says, of course, is true. Of course, afterwards, you know, after questioning is over, the man gets up, he leaves, People are still kind of in shock as to who this person was. Omar Radian goes out to look for him, can't find him, comes back. He says, Ya Rasulullah, who was this? He says, this was Jibreel who came to teach you your religion. He didn't come to teach Rasulullah, so some he is, he is not the teacher of Rasulullah. Allah is the teacher of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa but he says, this was Jibreel who came to teach you your religion. When we look at Umar, radiallahu anhu, and we look at his coming into Islam, of the roughly 124,000 plus or minus companions of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa he is the only one, you know, one of his uh, virtues is that he is the only one who Rasulullah asked for from Allah, from his Lord. Wednesday night, you know, sixth year of the mission, on a Wednesday night, Rasulullah makes the dua. That of the two Umars, you have Umar bin al-Khattab and Umar bin al-Hasham, Abu Jahl. He says, oh Allah, whichever one you prefer the mo most, give him to me and strengthen your religion with him. Strengthen, strengthen him, Islam through him. We'll come back to this door, because it's important. The next day, Thursday, that morning is when Omar Radim, if you look at the, you know, Omar Radim before his Islam, every aspect of him was against Islam. He loved his liquor, his women, beating the Muslims, torturing the Muslims, all of this. And yet, that night, Rasulullah Sallallahu makes the dua, and the next morning, Umar Radio is now coming in the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu to accept Islam. And I'm not going to go into the details of, of the story of his acceptance, but most of us know it. You know, when he reads the first eight verses of Surah Taha, but what even led to that, other than the dua of Rasulullah? And when Umar Radiyam becomes Muslim, verse number 64 of Surah Anfal, Surah number 8, Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, hasbuk Allah wa man ittaba'aka min al-mu'mineen. 
Allah SWT reveals this verse. And this is one of the verses that are revealed in honor of Umar. Allah SWT addressing his beloved. Ya ayyuhan Nabi. Oh my beloved Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Hasbuk Allah. Sufficient for you is Allah. Wa man ittaba'aka min al-mu'mineen. And those who follow you from the believers. There are those who translate this verse as sufficient for you. Or Allah is sufficient for you and for those who follow you from amongst the believers. But if you look at the context of why the verse is revealed and the dua that Rasulullah had made, you know, the dua he makes is, oh Allah, strengthen Islam through Umar. He could have simply said, oh Allah, strengthen Islam. Allah is the doer and controller of everything. He has authority over everything. But Allah SWT has created a system of cause and effect. And within that system, He has given certain of His slaves authority. And to deny that authority is to deny the doings of Allah. So Rasulullah doesn't say, Oh Allah, strengthen Islam. He says, strengthen Islam through Umar. And after Umar becomes Muslim, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hasbuk Allah. That sufficient for you is Allah and those from, uh, who follow you from the believers. Saying that these are enough for you. Which is interesting because Umar, right now according to most scholars, was number 40 as far as the Muslims. The beginning is with Ayn and the ending of the 40th is with Ayn. Some say 45th. But either way, the verse came at the, at the conversion of Umar. So it starts with Ayan, with Ali. You know, Ayan in Arabic is a letter, but Ayan in also is, the word is, the eye. And so you have Ayanun. You have Ayan, Ali, Ayan, Lam, Ya. And then you have Ayan, Omar. Ayan, Mim, Ra. And only those can understand that, those who truly have two eyes. You know, if you have to, you know, for those who know, in order to have deaf perception, you have to have two eyes. If you lose one eye, you lose deaf perception. You can see only the superficial things now. You can't see depth anymore. If you want to see depth, you have to have both eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He establishes Islam, strengthens Islam with both eyes, with the ayn of Ali and the ayn of Umar. So now we look at the connection between Ali and Umar. When as we mentioned before, at Ghadir, when Rasulullah Sallallahu he says, Man kuntu mawla, fahada aliyun mawla. The first one to stand up and congratulate Ali on this is who? Umar. Is Umar. And he says to him, he says that you have become mawmul uh, mu'mineen. You have become the mawla of the mu'mineen, of the believers. Because Rasulullah says that for whomsoever I am his mawla, Ali is his mawla. 
And so Omar, he says, he is the first to stand up and say that you are the Mawla of the Mu'mini. During the Khilafah of Omar, you know, Omar, one Jummah, he's giving khutbah. Sa'ari, radiallahu anhu, is, is the commander of the Muslim forces a thousand miles away, waging a war in Christian land. Omar Radio in the middle of the khutbah, he says, Ya Sariya al Jabal. Ya Sariya al Jabal. Three times he says this. There were companions there, including Abdul Abdul Rahman bin Awf. You know, he started looking at each other and says, you know, what's happened to Omar? And then after the salat, you know, they start talking to each other and says, Omar, you know, he's gone see he must you know, he's losing his mind. Abdul Rahman Radhi comes up to Omar Radhi and he says, you know, what's, are you joking with us? It is Ali Radhi he tells them, he says, take your words back. Repent for what you have said. The only Allah, they recognize each other. Of course, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu he said that the only Allah are under a canopy beneath me. They are under my canopy. And I recognize them, and those within the canopy recognize each other. But the canopy is huge. So it may be that someone over here doesn't know someone over here. But those in this area know each other. Or rather, someone at this level may not know someone at this level, or vice versa. But those at this level, they know each other. Ali, of course, is the door to Wilaya. He knows them all. But if you look at the, the caliber and the character of Omar, he is in the company of Ali. He is not Ali, but he is in the company of Ali. So Ali, and even within the companions, they're all the friends of Allah. But then you have levels within them. So some of them don't recognize what Omar is saying. But Ali recognizes what Omar is saying. And so it was a month later when the army of Saudi returned. And then they tell the people that we were in the middle of the battle. We had the high ground on the mountain. And the enemy vanished, and we thought they had run away, so we were coming down. And then we heard the, the voice of Amirul Mu'mineen telling us, no, stay with the mountain. And we climbed back up only to find out that if we had, if, if we had come down, then they had laid a trap that they would have pushed the boulders on us and shot arrows upon us and would have destroyed us all. But when we heard the voice of, of Amir al-Mu'mineen, of Omar radiallahu anhu, we stuck to the mountain and we were safe. When we look at Omar Radiolan's connection with the grandson of Ras grandsons of Rasulullah, with Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, there's nothing but awe, admiration, and love. Because Omar Radio knew how much how much Rasulullah loved them. You know, in the famous incident where Rasulullah is, is walking through the streets of Medina Munawwara with Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein salam, on his shoulders. And Omar Radio he sees this and he says, What a beautiful ride. Meaning Rasulullah. 
And the Rasulullah says, and he responds by saying, what beautiful writers. Which is why whenever the spoils of war would come, you know, and there are many other stories, but whenever the spoils of war would come, Umar Radha would give to Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain salam, first before he would give to anyone else, including his sons. And when one of his sons asked him, they say, why do you give to them before you give to us and we are your sons? He says to them what? He says, bring a grandfather and a grandmother, like the grandfather and grandmother of Imam of Hassan and Hussein. And bring a father and a mother, like the mother and the father of Imam ha of Hassan and Hussein. And I will give to you first then. And if you can't do this, then I will continue to do as I'm doing. You know, if you look at the mother of Imam Hussain, she is the leader of the women of Jannah. She is, but she is the one, the only one, for whom Rasulullah said, Badat minni, that she is a part of me. And he says, whatever pleases her, pleases me, and whatever displeases her, displeases me. So if you look at, you know, the love and the honor that Umar Radhan gives to the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because there are those who try to create issues where there are no issues. And you, if you also look at the honor that the household of Rasulullah gives to Umar. You know, because when, again, when people are questioning the sanity of Umar, who comes to his aid other than Ali? Who defends his honor and his status? This is also why Umar Radiyallahu made the statement that if, it, if Ali had not been there, then Umar would have been destroyed. There were several decisions that he had made, two specific ones. That Ali Radhiyallahu told him, no, you can't do this, you have to do this. And then when Umar Radhiyallahu saw the reality of the situation, he changed his decision. Also, why Umar Radhiyallahu made the dua that, oh Allah, do not allow me to see the day. Or rather, do not allow me to be there when there is no Ali. And this is the love that they have for each other. Those who try to create animosity amongst them, they have their own issues. You know, we, I can't help them. So, I'll end here today, inshallah. Uh, today again is the 27th of Dil Hajj. Next few days, Muharram starts. Uh, inshallah, some point, you know, we'll start talking more directly about Imam Hussein al-Islam and the household of Rasulullah probably next week. Uh, but um, you know, inshallah, some point in August uh, or later in August, we will have a program in the honor of Imam Hussein al-Islam and the martyrs of Karbala, inshallah. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, fill our hearts with his true love, the true love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah, those who have not made sunnah go and make sunnah, inshallah.